This is Passion for Your Passions, a podcast about what makes life worth living. I'm Krista. And I'm Julie. And on this episode, we're talking about Pixar, the animation studios. So starting out with Pixar, I, th I think like the initial question is sort of always, how did this passion begin? But like, I think for pretty much everybody, it begins the same way, which is being a child. And it's just sort of like parents and other people being like, here, watch this. <laughs> right. And I mean, what's even funnier is that depending on your age range, it's always the same movies like that got you. More or less. I feel like with younger people, since like Pixar is relatively new when you think about it and retrospect everything else. So unless you're talking to much younger people, it's pretty much going to be this one of the same three movies that <laughs> they started with. Yeah. And I think um, for us particularly, because we were small children when this really started, I mean, you know, I, we were kind of interesting because we have, like, the full breadth of it. <laughs> right. Uh, we were whereas, there when it all began. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, like, you know, some of the younger kids, I don't, I don't know, like, how much people watch Bugs Life, you know? Like, that one's a really weird one. <laughs> Just yeah, in I think a lot of people started on Monsters, Inc. and Toy Story. Well, and, you know... I mean, if you're, like, a child child now, then, you know, like, inside out, and <laughs> it starts, uh, right. it starts getting into that territory. But I will say, for me, I don't, I mean, I don't know how young I was. I don't think, like, I saw any of the early ones in theaters, but, I mean, I definitely saw Toy Story and A Bug's Life, and especially Bug's Life for a long time was, like, one of my favorite movies. I'm... I'm actually kind of weird. I don't really like Toy Story. <laughs> it comes and goes for me. I don't like how long it's lasted. But when I watch, like, the first one as an adult, the jokes are even more hilarious to me today. So the animation's a little weak, though. I do think the animation for Bugs Life is better. But just, like, one of my favorite bits from Toy Story is when he's like, Do you see the hat? I am Mrs. Nesbitt, who's that? He just does the, like, <laughs> insane bit. I do love that. And I love Ham, every joke that Ham does, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, Bugs Life was definitely more of a Julie-type movie, especially growing up. No, and I mean, I think Toy Story, like, has some parts that are good. And I think, like, especially now that I'm older, like, it's fine. It's not, it's not really my cup of tea, but, like, it, it's fine. It's just, when I was a kid... I think it kind of scared me <laughs> was more what it was. And so I don't yeah. think like I developed that like deep interest in it because <laughs> I was like, I, I don't really like this <laughs> as a child. There's like all these like really weird parts <laughs> where like toys are being tortured and some of the characters are like scary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sid and his. I think his dog really bothered me. The dog had like soulless eyes and everything. <laughs> Well, even, like, the creepy toys and, um... Yeah. I don't know. There's some other... I can't think of it right now off the top of my head, but there's, like, another part I don't think I liked very much either. Um, and it's weird, too, because... So, Toy Story 2, I did see in theaters, which, I guess, ages me, although I, I don't know how when it came out, but I saw it in theaters. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, honestly, Toy Story 2 kind of does the same thing. <laughs> like, there's a couple moments in there that are pretty creepy, especially for kids. <laughs> yeah, but I do love the outtakes that they created for Toy Story 2. Those are hilarious. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I think, like, Toy Story 2, I think I like more than I like Toy Story 1. It's just, it's... I guess, like, more what I'm saying is I find that it's interesting that, like, their staple piece has so many of these just very frightening moments. <laughs> and it's supposed to be for kids, you know? Like, 
generally for kids. <laughs> Not well, completely. You say that as if the Black Cauldron isn't a movie. <laughs> Yeah, or, you know, we're also talking about Bug's Life, and there are a couple of scenes in Bug's Life that could be traumatic, if you want to take it that way. For some reason, though, I don't feel like Bug's Life freaked me out as much. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's because it's, it's not people. Like, it's distant in that way. So Toy Story has people, even though it's toys, it's like people and toys playing against each other. Bug's Life, it's literally just Bugs. So as much as like Hopper can be a scary character, you're like, he's a grasshopper and I can just like step on him. <laughs> so. Yeah. Although I think like the scene that I'm talking about that was particularly frightening was the scenes with the bird. Oh my I gosh. I say the bird was a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, the bird. I don't know how they managed to make like, he was a little... like a robin or something. Like not a big bird. It wasn't even that big. I think it was a finch. <laughs> yeah, funny. and he was just terrifying. <laughs> oh yeah, my gosh. Just a bit. Well, since we've sat here and rambled about all of our favorites, let's talk about just Pixar as a company. I don't I don't really know how often people do this. I think a lot of people tend to just sort of focus on the movies, but when I was looking up some of the historical facts about this, well, that sounds weird to say. <laughs> it's not <laughs> historical, feels like the I went through word. the scrolls. <laughs> yeah, the scrolls from 20 years ago. <laughs> or, well, probably more like 30 now. But, <laughs> um, so when they first started, they started as a subgroup, as a part of LucasArts, which I just thought that was very interesting. I had never heard that before. I don't feel like they did a lot when they were under... Lucas Arts, like I guess they worked on Star Trek too. They did some stuff on Young Sherlock Holmes, but like I think they mainly sold hardware. So they would like, I, and I'm not even honestly sure what they were selling. Like I don't understand if it's like animation software or if it was something else. But they were selling this hardware to like the government and scientific and medical markets. Uh, so I don't know. That just kind of really fascinates me that. I don't know, maybe somebody, maybe Joe Biden's, like, got this, like, old Pixar thing, and I, I don't even know, like, what it would do. <laughs> <laughs> Just interesting. It's always funny, and I mean, LucasArts, we know that that became Star Wars, like, so it's even... Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure, well, I mean, I guess I'm not completely sure, but I'm sure that LucasArts, I think LucasArts was always Star Wars, I think that just was George Lucas's, I'm going to make money off Star Wars thing. And then he kind of really didn't make money off of Star Wars, which was kind of weird. <laughs> nice big middle finger. <laughs> yeah, to himself, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, eventually, they really became the Pixar that we know when they were invested by and bought by Steve Jobs, which this part I didn't know. And this happened in 1986. So I think like around this time was when they really kind of started to get into the animation stuff. I guess they did like um, a little bit of like 2D animation uh, in The Rescuers Down Under. And apparently Disney and Pixar worked together on a lot of the early films, which I don't even think I really understood that. Like, I don't know, like to me as a kid, Pixar and Disney were just always different. But I don't know, in reading this, it seems like they really just kind of had a partnership. And I mean, Disney didn't own Pixar until about 2006, but they would like do things together. And I guess like they had contracts with each other, which I don't know, it's just interesting. I think I always associated them. I mean, I do know the difference between a Disney Pixar and just a Disney movie. Like, I think when we were younger, Disney movie was mostly princess-oriented. We were at the cuspus. There we go. We were, like, at the end of that phase where they were just doing mostly princess movies. And, you know, they had Mickey and all the standard characters. So, I mean, I could tell the difference between a Pixar Disney and just a regular Disney, but I've always associated them. Yeah, well, I mean, apparently pretty much all of their early movies were essentially like distributed through Disney. 
Um, so like Toy Story and Bugs Life and, um, but like basically all of the really early ones, like Disney owned a part of it, which now they own all of it. So, and I mean, I think like, um, that really went into effect with Brave. Like, I think Brave is really kind of the first one where you're really like, yeah, this is a Disney Pixar together joint. <laughs> Cause it's a princess movie from Pixar. Okay. Well, that's really all the historical facts I have. So, Julie, would you like to tell a story time? Story time! So, I do a lot of housework, as it may have been or may not have been brought up. My house is a full remodel. And I, for a short, short time, had a puppy slash dog that I had to get rid of eventually, but when I had him, he had a lot of issues because he was part husky, which just means insane. And he had horrible separation anxiety, so much so that I think I'd had him for a couple weeks and I went to go take a shower and he would demand to be in the bathroom, which is okay. But I was taking a shower and out of nowhere, he was just like crying. I was like, what? Like, I would talk to him while I'm in the shower, and then eventually he just, like, climbed into the shower and was just, like, getting rained on and miserable looking at me like, I hate it in here. I'm like, then get out of here. But he's like, but I need to be next to you. And I was just so upset. And so this leads me to, he had a phase of just, he was a little demon, like, I guess you could call it his teenage years. And I was working on my master bedroom, which it had a popcorn ceiling. Which, if you don't know what that is, it's the fucking worst, and I absolutely hate it. And I tried to, like, get rid of it, and my the person living with me was like, I'm going to take a grinder to it. And I was like, that's the dumbest idea ever, but he did it anyway. And so then there was a lot of weird blank spots and just imperfections <laughs> in the ceiling. And any normal person would have just skim-coated it, but I'm like, that gives me anxiety because I'm like, I have to make it perfect, and that's impossible, so I can't do it. And so I would never skim-coat. So instead, I was like, I'm going to do a bunch of weird-ass patterns on the ceiling. <laughs> and so I essentially, like, created branches all over my ceiling and leaves and its oak tree. And how I did that was I took, like, a piping bag for icing and put, like, branches out with it and used my hands to give it, like, barky texture. And then I have this little stencil for oak leaves. And, you know, this sounds a little daunting, but it's a lot worse than you think because all I had was, like, a two-step ladder which means I didn't have scaffolding or anything, so I couldn't, like, put my stuff up there or lay down or anything. I literally had to, like, crank my neck all the way back and, like, two at a time, do leaves, go back down, get more putty, do more leaves. So it was, like, the worst thing I've ever done. And anytime someone comes into my house and sees it, goes, oh, my God, that's so pretty. I'm like, I will never fucking <laughs> do that for anybody. Like, <laughs> this is once and only once will I ever do this thing unless you want to buy me scaffolding because this is bullshit. But what made this even worse is I'm doing this for, like, a week. Every day, I'm, like, working hours on the ceiling. And one day, my dog just decided enough was enough. And he wasn't allowed in that room because, for some reason, he decided he wanted to pee in my closet. And I was like, why, though? And so, like, he wasn't allowed in that room because that's just what he wanted to do. And I just put carpet in there. Or, yeah, I just put the carpet in and everything. So I was like, you're not let in there, you little demon. And at one point, he just couldn't stand that. And he ran into the room, like, busted the gate down, ran in there, knocked me off of the step ladder, and peed on the spotlight I had in the, like near the closet and then ran back out. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to murder you. Like, like, you literally did everything horribly wrong. Like, I am injured. I fucked up the ceiling. You peed, and you peed on electrical. Like, for the love of God, did you plan to be literally the worst, like, for this whole 30 seconds? Like, I do not understand. <laughs> So, sometimes <laughs> animals are weird like that. I don't. I don't get it. It's like they just like wig out. <laughs> it's like they're just lose their shit. Yeah, their like wire brain is not connected right or something, and then they're just like, "I'm gonna do all of this really horrible stuff," and it's like, "I am right here." <laughs> <laughs> Could you like not do that? <laughs> well, the one that always cracks me up is um one of my cats will like and and she knows like all of them know that I don't let them <laughs> on the kitchen counter like they don't jump up there but like every once in a while 
Viv will want to test it. <laughs> like, and, and I can tell too, because she'll like look at me, she like meows in a certain way. She's got like that cat butt wiggle thing going on. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't do. laughs> and like, you can see like her tensing up, like she's about to do it. And I have to like, you know, give her the yell. <laughs> The specific yell that's like, don't even dare. <laughs> don't you fucking do it. And then normally she just runs away. <laughs> well, I guess getting back to Pixar, I printed out a very long list. I kind of realized it took up way more pages than I kind of thought that it would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't print it. I was like, Jesus, let's have it up. <laughs> Yeah, I just kind of wanted to, like, have some of the dates and, like, who did stuff just in case. And then also to be able to, like, look at what the actual timeline is. Because actually, weirdly, I think that there are some movies that I always thought were Pixar movies that aren't, apparently. <laughs> um, I think I knew that all of these ones on this list were Pixar movies, but I think, like, there were a couple other ones where I was like, oh, that's not a Pixar movie? Okay. <laughs> I was right, just <laughs> I was just horribly mistaken. <laughs> With our beautiful long list of Pixar movies that we have here, are there any particular ones that you would like to talk about? Do you want to talk about like any of your most favorites or your least favorites? Uh I'd say Wally. Wally. <laughs> As a favorite or a least a favorite? favorite? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was a favorite. I was gonna um, say, I love Wally. Yeah, I think Wally Wally's definitely my mom's favorite Pixar, and so there's like Wally stuff all over the place. And I love the using the old musical Dolly, Hello Dolly in the movie, and the idea it's like a lesson about environmental science, which I'm always like tell more kids and adults about environmental sciences. So I'd say that's probably my favorite. I did think Big Hero 6 was Pixar, though. I know. See, that's what I was saying. It's like, there's... Because yeah. I can't... Oh, God, what is the movie? I can't even think of what the name of it is now. Um, the one where it's, like, the kid who he, like, goes into the future and he, uh, like, he joins Robinson's. the family. Yeah, I always thought that that was Pixar. I don't know why I thought that. It doesn't even really look that much like Pixar now that I'm thinking about it, but it's not Pixar. <laughs> yeah, I I think I knew that one wasn't because it was, like, one of those off ones. <laughs> Just weird. But I 100% thought Big Hero 6 was Pixar. So that's weird to me. Because <laughs> that would be my favorite if it wasn't, if it was Pixar. <laughs> We've been lied to. Yes. Uh, but I will say, I do also really like Wally. -E. I think, like, honestly, out of all of these, if I was, like, going to recommend a movie to, like, anybody, I would probably recommend Wally. -E. Maybe I think, Ratatouille. I think but... I'd say The Incredibles. My dad, that's, like, his favorite animated movie of all time is The Incredibles. We watched that so many times. <laughs> Some people do really like The Incredibles. I guess that is true. I don't, like, I don't really find that that one is one of my favorites. Like, I'm fine with it. Um, I think I didn't watch it for some reason when I was younger. Like, I watched it, like, a lot older for some reason. And it just, like, didn't, it didn't really, like, hit for me the same. Right. Yeah. And then, up, I find, I find this really funny. So my niece... She's now 10, 11. Uh, Up was her favorite, which all of us found super weird because it's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. as adults, we'd watch it and just be like in tears for the first half. And she's just like three or four and does not really know what's going on or care. And so she just sits through it and like loves every second of it. We're just like, dear God. <laughs> But for Christmas one year, we found the stuffed toy of, like, Doug the dog and him saying, I love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I actually, I had this with my little brother. 
because he, like, one of the times I was watching him, he really wanted to watch, like, the live action Disney's. So, like, he would want to watch Beauty and the Beast and then, um, the, uh, the Lion King, the, the live action Lion King. And it was also weird because, especially the live action ones, they are a little bit, like, more on the scary side than I would say, like, the animated one is. And so he would eventually get to a part where he didn't want to watch it anymore. Because <laughs> it was, like, kind of scary. And it was right. just like, it was like, well, so you, like, recognize that this is for kids, but you're, like, picking and choosing. <laughs> you want to watch the first <laughs> 15 minutes of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. She watched yeah. the whole thing. It was just like, I love all this. And we're just like, <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> it's so sad. But I just always thought it was funny. Well, I think for my loves, I already talked about A Bug's Life. I do really love Monsters, Inc. That one, I just think that that one's great. It's maybe not the kind of movie I would recommend for everybody. I think that there's probably an age that it probably plays better with. Uh, Wally, like I said, I would just about recommend that to anybody. And uh, I actually really like Brave, which is kind of another weird one because a lot of people really hate Brave. <laughs> I love Brave, so. I just, so to get like slightly controversial, <laughs> uh, I, so like Brave basically came out around the same time as like Tangled and Frozen. And so, like, a bunch of people just really super jumped on the Frozen train wagon. Um, and, you know, Frozen's fine. Like, I I don't necessarily have a problem with Frozen. It's just, like, to me, if you're comparing those three, Frozen would not be my favorite for, like, a few reasons. And some of it being that, like, some of the key points of the story of Frozen, I don't like. <laughs> Which is, like, uh... You know, like, they do the whole thing, which was cool, that, you know, they were trying to be like, oh, you shouldn't fall in love in first sight, Anna. Don't do that. But then she also spends a week with that new guy and then <laughs> falls in love with him. So it's kind of like, I don't feel like you set the lesson up, <laughs> right? And it's just annoying. And plus, the other thing is, is to me, Frozen only really has the one song that I like Everybody knows it. But, like, all the rest of them just don't really do it for me, really. So it just kind of ends up not being a movie that I like that much. Like, if I was going to, like, compare things together, I would say that, like, Tangled was the better version. But, like, obviously Tangled is very different from Frozen. They don't tell the same story. <laughs> the story is very, very different. Uh, it's just, to me, Tangled worked a lot better. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Tangled is definitely, like, a really high point. Like, it's a great princess movie. And Frozen, I do like Love is an Open Door and uh, the depressing part of Let's Build a Snowman. See, so, yeah, I would say out of the three, like, Tangled's probably... I would understand if people pick Tangled over Brave, even though I really like Brave. But Frozen, yeah, and I think, I think, like, the second part of it that I was going to say, too, is, like... There were, there were parts of Frozen that irritated me from, like, the, I guess, like, the sister thing. Like, not that that bothered me in general. It's just, like, okay, so let me, like, explain, like, a little bit of why I really like Brave so much. It, it mainly has to do with the fact that Brave is a story about a mother and a daughter. And, like, it's about family, but, like, it's, like, this really complicated relationship of, like, understanding your mother and your mother understanding your daughter and, like, coming to an agreement. And, like, particularly for me, where, especially, like, at that time, I was, like, not going through such a great time in my life, like, that story really, like, just had all the feels for me and it had all of the emotion of what actually happens when you have a family fight. 
yeah. that was like a th that was like a big thing that really irritated me about Frozen because like one of the big main plot points of Frozen is like basically they're they're good friends when they're like six. And then uh, Elsa doesn't talk to Anna for like 16 years. <laughs> and so like then, like basically they just kind of play it off as like Anna doesn't care. <laughs> and it's like, I, I really don't think that's what it would be like. <laughs> like I think Anna would like be kind of pissed or if not pissed, like there would definitely be some words. <laughs> well, and that just kind of happened. I guess. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Well, I mean, I probably shouldn't sit here and rant for 10 minutes about Frozen <laughs> on the about Pixar Frozen. episode. <laughs> it's just, my whole point about it is, is that I really like Brave, and I don't feel like it deserves the hate that it gets fully. Right. So, we've talked about a Disney movie we hate. We should probably get into the Pixar movies we just didn't. Okay, well, what Pixar movies do you hate? I really hate cars. <laughs> <laughs> what what I is it that you hate about cars? <laughs> Mater, very fucking Mater. Like the whole, <laughs> like everything about it just annoys the absolute shit out of me. Why does a car have buck teeth? Why do they have teeth at all? They didn't need to have teeth. Like just, <laughs> I hate everything. The only thing I like about cars is now I go, Chick -chick like I do that sound. And that's like the only thing I like about cars. <laughs> oh no, you like the little Italian, like, uh, the cars that fix the race cars. I know you do. Oh, yes. I oh, yeah. That. I mean, I think, like, I mean, I haven't watched, I will say, I have not watched cars in, like, years. I think when I watched it, I was fine with it. And I think that's just kind of where I am. I'm just, like, fine with it. It's probably one that I will never watch again. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I, seen I, it I, since I saw it. <laughs> um, I mean, I think, like, besides that though like really the only other ones i mean i'm not really sure because i'm looking at the list i'm not like seeing anyone that like i specifically hate <laughs> viscerally <laughs> um besides like i said i didn't really like toy story when i was a kid especially i think um i have watched a fair amount of the newer ones i haven't seen all of them like, so, I haven't seen Onward, I haven't seen Luca, and I haven't seen Lightyear. So, the, like, I've seen basically all the other ones. Um, and, I don't know, some of the more recent ones, like, I guess, since, like, Incredibles 2, have just been kind of, eh. <laughs> like, that's just kind of how I feel about them. Like, they're, I think, like, I kind of liked Soul... There was, like, moments of Turning Red that I liked, but, like, Turning Red is not a movie for everybody, for sure. <laughs> uh, well, I think a couple things are happening. One, we're old, <laughs> so the movies, fair. like, specifically aren't made for us. And that's why I think Turning Red is. I like Turning Red, and I'm glad it's out there for younger people to see. But, yeah, I kind of get why it's... Not really for me. Uh, Soul, I liked moments in it, but to me, it should have been a lot more or a lot less, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like they just did a weird middle that they can't... I want movies to make a point, even if it's offensive to me. I want them to stick to it. Like, I think that's the point. And with Soul, it was just like, to your interpretation, slash in the middle, slash tame, or however you want to put it, and I just wanted it to be more than that. And that's coming from an atheist, so it's like, I wanted to watch it to get a feel for what they were trying to say, and it just feels like they took a easy path, I guess. So, eh, and I just don't like any of the sequels. I don't hate them, but I don't like any of them. Like, I don't think they were worth making <laughs> for the most part. Toy Story, I guess. It's probably the exception because they're in, that Toy Story was such a beginner's movie for them that they did get better and cleaner and had more plot. But every other sequel, I just don't think was worth making. I think that Toy Story 2 was fine. Toy Story 3, I don't know, was kind of weird. I know a lot of Too people far. liked it, but it was kind of <laughs> weird. Um, 
And then Incredibles 2 was quite a bummer. <laughs> like, for something that had so much buildup, like, people it just took wanted too it long. so yeah. bad. It, it just took way too didn't long. didn't do it. <laughs> and it wasn't enough for how long it took. Like, yeah. That's all it was. I don't think it was bad. It's just like, if you wait that long, you're setting yourself up for failure because people are going to anticipate so much more because it's like, why did it take you this long? So. And of course, Cars I, think, uh, I never saw it because why would I watch it? <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Finding Dory was okay. It wasn't like the worst. It definitely had some moments that like hit you in the feels. But That's what I'm saying is it, like, Comparing it to the first one, I just feel like the sequels weren't needed. Like, they were just money grabs. They were obviously, like, not uh, thought of when the first movie came out. So I don't like that feeling. I like fe sequels to feel like they were supposed to be there, and these ones don't. Like, Pixar has not gotten that down, unlike Marvel. <laughs> so then what you're saying is, is that you're very much looking forward to Inside Out too. Sure. <laughs> That's how you want to interpret this. In terms of Pixar, is there any sort of wishes that you have for the future or just like maybe even movies like that you would want to see or just things that you want to talk about animated movies in general? I know this is a very big catch all, but like <laughs> just just to kind of end it. So, I mean, like, for example... You know, my kind of ender about this is, like, just a kind of a general point of animation doesn't have to just be for kids. I know that, like, it's probably kind of a little bit weird for, you know, two adult females to be talking about movies that are very clearly made for kids. But, like, you know, I mean, look at something like Up, like what Julie was just saying. There are definitely moments in there that, like, hit very differently for an adult versus a kid. And, like, you get all of that emotion you just wouldn't get as a kid. And it still works. Right. You gotta have it. <laughs> I don't know. I Like, I just think that my point is, is I think, like, a lot of people like to write off things that are animated as just being for kids. And I don't, I don't know. I just don't agree with that. I mean, I definitely think, like, you can have that kind of stuff. But it doesn't have to be. I mean, look at Archer. You wouldn't show that to a three-year-old. <laughs> That's not for kids. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got Bob's Burgers, which is for both. Yeah, I mean, I would say some of the Pixar movies are like that. Like, I mean, like Up. I mean, Up really is a weird one. I, I don't feel like Up is mainly for kids. <laughs> I really just kind of don't. I mean, I guess your, your niece liked it, but like... <laughs> Well, there's a difference between kid appropriate and made for kids, right? So all the Pixar movies are at least kid appropriate, and now they're taking more of a spin sometimes to be for kids. There is a difference, and they try to maximize their profit, guys. They want adults to watch it and kids, so it's not just for kids. And then for me, what I would say is, so right now Pixar is very focused and Disney on representation, which is a great thing. Kids need to see themselves on TV and know, like, that they're represented to feel like things they can work towards, and I love that. The only thing I would really say is what I was complaining about the sequels, Pixar has the resources, the money, the fame, everything that they could do series. Like, they can do what Marvel did, where it's like, these are meant to go in an order and they all come together, and I feel like Pixar could really do something like that, and they just haven't utilized that. Everything that they do feels... Either they're just coming up with a general stream of, like I said right now, it's about re representation, or they're like, that made money, let's make another one. People seem to like it, and then they have to come up with an idea when they could just hope that, just bank on someone liking it and having a plan and moving forward. I really wish they would do that, and then I want more stuff that's more like Bugs Life and that it's not me, but it's still tangible, so I guess Soul would be more like that, where it's like, that's kind of energy and people and stuff. So I'd want more stuff that's like, I'd love to see something with plants, like giving flowers and trees, like a voice and doing an environmental thing. I mean, what about Bugs Life too? Come on, guys. Or is that a thing? I feel like that was not a thing. I don't think so. 
I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think, uh, you know, Bug's Life is an interesting one, too, because I think, like, you know, part of the reason why Bug's Life and Toy Story work so well is because, like, at that time, animation was not as good as it is today. So, like, you could get away with, like, making something look like a toy or making something look like a bug. But it was a lot harder to, like, not be creepy when making a person. <laughs> That's why um, they just weren't there. <laughs> and, I mean, I suppose they could do the same thing with the current technology. Although, I don't know. Bug's Life is just such a great movie. Don't fuck it up <laughs> if you're going to well, yeah, make a sequel. You go to plants or... Like, do something with Mother Nature, make that a character. I don't know. Like, I know that people have been making those kinds of movies. I just want a million more of them because it's like, we're not getting the point. <laughs> Let's fucking yeah. nail it. Or do something like, I don't know, like Greek gods or other gods. I guess they don't have to be Greek. Uh, what if they you know. do the reverse of what Disney's doing? So Disney's like, let's make live actions of everything. What if they were like, let's make super super animated versions of everything <laughs> like what like what do you well, mean like, any live action thing or like for instance so they just did they did what was the first live action they did <laughs> was it uh <laughs> For some reason, the first thing that came to mind was that they make a super animated version of Supernatural. Nice. I don't even know why. Let's do it. Like, they, gonna... like, oh, they just start blatantly stealing, like, other franchises. Was it Snow White? Like, I want them to redo Snow White, but in today's animation. So we did old animation, live action. Hmm. Now let's do hyper-death animation. <laughs> make it even more ridiculous yeah. and pointless <laughs> i think i think that my thing is is that i just want them to do hercules again and s still have danny devito in it he was cast perfectly <laughs> nothing has changed <laughs> if danny devito's cast he will always be the one to be cast <laughs> forever. Forever. forever and and if danny devito i like how i say if if danny devito ever perishes nobody else can play that role <laughs> episode we're talking about adventure time adventure come on. time come on grab your friends <laughs>how there's like all the different demons the desire demons and the knowledge demons or whatever you're you're a sleep demon yeah just i'm not don't. sure what that would look like <laughs> in dragon age but you're a sleep demon